Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Coach K and I'm here to give you some tips and tricks on digital rendering. Uh, and today I'm going to be working with a glass bottle and I'm hoping next week in class uh, we'll be able to do some good observation of glass bottles that we're bringing uh, to class and uh, also then developing quick techniques for how to illustrate glass uh, in our in our sketch renderings, our ideation. So stay tuned, grab your tablet, and let's get sketching. Here's the bottle that I had in the intro, and you can see already how light is, the interplay of light uh, with the varying thicknesses of, the, of this glass bottle. And so there's a lot of light refraction, there's some reflection. Uh, it's casting out a really cool uh, shadow uh, from that as well. I'd like to do a vignette with that at some point. But uh, really quickly, I, I did something really different. I downloaded uh, a new, a piece of software, a new app called Krita, and uh, you can go to krita.org. It's an open source uh, program, so it's uh, absolutely free, and you can start playing around with it. And literally, I've spent 10 minutes with this program, so I don't know it very well, but I thought I'd play around with it and see what I could accomplish. So you can see here, I won't be able to go into too much depth, but all I really needed to do uh, is figure out a lot of the brushes, some of the, the blur functions. It's really pretty self-explanatory if you get into it. And then I just started playing around and I wanted to, to stay kind of rough and a little bit edgy on that and just see where I could take it, how I could transform uh, this really simple application of uh, uh, with a brush or a watercolor brush and the color so it, it took me a while to kind of figure things out uh, to some degree. But like I said, I wasn't overly preoccupied with, uh, let's say, the, uh, the outline or so forth. I knew I could go in at any point uh, and select it like I'm doing right here. I can select the whole bottle area uh, just like in sketchbook or in Photoshop, you can invert that selection and delete. Uh, or in this case, I'm kind of filling in before I do that that uh, inversion of the selection. But I kind of liked the, the way that the blur tool was reacting with those brush strokes. So I kept going and um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's always kind of uh, a little agonizing to try to figure something out, but there are some tuto tutorials on uh, YouTube. I watched about five minutes of one before I couldn't stand it and I just jumped right in uh, trying to figure things out. That's not always the, s the smartest thing to do, but uh, I like to get in there and kind of get my hands dirty, so to speak. So, but thinking back about the glass bottle and the light refraction, uh, you can see I'm, I'm adding some highlights. I'm trying to give some depth to those hot spots and some shadow uh, eluding to the wall thickness uh, on the clear bottle. This is almost taking on more of a, a frosted bottle uh, effect to it because there's not uh, a lot of really hard lines to it other than I did add some uh, exterior kind of boundary lines uh, and that's mainly just to, to uh, again, try to obtain that that implied realism and also to make it look uh, believable, look, look like a manufactured product. So there's a little bit of a glare I put on there right now, but I'm blurring that back out as well. So truth be told, um, I tried unsuccessfully to use the emboss tool in Krita. So uh, I switched over quickly to Photoshop where I've used that for years doing this and uh, um, you can see here I'm adjusting the depth of the, uh, the embossing and then also I need to go in and adjust it because it has that kind of grayish tone to it. I want to go in and colorize that and have it better match the color of the bottle. So that's, that's easily done by adjusting the hue and the lightness and darkness. 
then um, uh, ironically, I, I wanted some variation in that as well, and I couldn't really achieve that uh, until I went back into Sketchbook. So man, uh, there's the trifecta. I've used all three, three different apps for the, for this one quick little illustration. But just putting in some highlights here, having again light kind of bouncing off of sharper corners, that would be in that embossing. But there's something about it that looks a little, it looks a little bit too linear too sharp I guess is what I'm trying to say and so I want to go back in and I'm, I'm gonna actually use the blur tool and blur that logo and kind of knock it back to make it look more like a, a soft embossed uh, edge like it probably would be if it were in a frosted glass or something so here's just a little bit of cleanup at the very end uh, like I said I, I wanted you know some of these techniques look kind of rough and uh and that's okay it, it, it's totally fine but it's always good to have some grounding element some linear boundary or border to the, the product or the the object that you're you're sketching so that's what i did here all right uh the next example this is all done in, in sketchbook and I just I did this sketch quite a while ago but it uh, it just I'm kind of showing you here how things are organized so each bottle is grouped all the layers for each bottle are grouped and um, there's quite a few layers for each uh, each bottle and because I, I go in I put in obviously the rough lines the, the refined lines uh, I put in base colors and then a lot of the wall thicknesses, highlights, uh, they're all on separate layers and that's mainly so that I can adjust the opacity and uh, in this case I had the base blue which I really liked but then I put in a secondary black, solid black layer uh, on top of the blue and I can adjust that up so I can get different tonal values uh, which are, you know, is a nice attribute without changing your base blue color. So here I'm going in and I'm just kind of showing you the various layers. Uh, I have a, uh, a, a liquid fill level indicated in the kind of up in the, the neck of that bottle. And you kind of have to decide and think through. I mean, these are intersecting forms that that uh, create the shape, the overall shape of this bottle. And so you have to think about, well, if the neck of the bottle is inset from the main uh, circular uh, or cylindrical body, then you would have highlights running along, around that edge. In some instances, you won't, right? If, if all surfaces are flush, then all you would see would be the wall thicknesses. So going in, I wanted some change of materials. So I'm putting a little badge on there with the Lux logo. And I mean, ultimately, you have to decide, do you want, and it's kind of a personal choice. Do you, do you like some of that rough sketch uh, exposed or do you want to go back once you, you have it complete and kind of uh, drop the opacity almost down to, or maybe you do drop it to zero uh, or very close to zero. So now we're going to be working with the, the third bottle here. It's kind of a the base uh, uh, circular area that you see. I wanted that to be more kind of like a, a more donut shaped. So the where the badge will be is actually inset and the, the intersecting neck of that bottle would be uh, conical or cylindrical. Okay, so I'll be zooming in and showing you some highlights, but it's, uh, it's really kind of fun to experiment with getting all these details uh, in, in such a way that you're fooling the viewer's eye, right? You're, you're, we're developing techniques that allow people to look at something and think, wow, that, that looks exactly like glass, but it's something that we were able to achieve in 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes, depending on uh, your, your comfort level with a particular app. So here I'm just showing how you can really let that let those the light the kind of that sparkle jumping off of and around the badge and the glass 
uh, it's just kind of a nice effect, I think, to, to really enhance the, the, the glassness of, <laughs> of that bottle. So I wanted some contrast on the neck on this one, just uh, different design detail in the logo. And then I'll go back and ultimately knock back the, the rough sketch that you can still see kind of peeking out around here. I was alluding to uh, how to get some of these effects. And, and one tool that I found uh, is the fountain pen tool, uh, not the ballpoint, but the fountain pen. It's very pressure sensitive, so you can get a lot of line variation just by, you know, pressing hard, letting up, and kind of flicking it around, right? That's kind of how I get that effect of a, a nice fade on the end of a stroke, whether it's the pencil or, in this case, it was the, the fountain pen. And, you know, using that, that circle, uh, the circle guide, you know, I used it for the highlights. I used it for, I mean, the highlight on the bottle, the highlight on the badge itself. And so just keeping, uh, keeping your guides uh, organized and using them, uh, trying to keep them. It's always good to work in one particular area and so that you don't have to zoom in or zoom out and lose your guide, so to speak. So here is a good example I'm showing of, of that fountain pen and, and the pressure sensitivity that it has. And so you can go back in. Now I grabbed a white pencil effect and I'm kind of going in on top of that, uh, that fountain pen. So it's kind of giving you a little bit of that contrast that you would have with light refraction and highlights. Uh, and then that last little bit there is just using a little bit of white airbrush. So you kind of extend the, the flare that, that, you, that you may want on, on your, your bottle. So that's kind of a quick look at how to get some nice glass effects. One thing that we can do to further enhance uh, this overall uh, you know, glass bottle illustration is putting in a, a background or a vignette that really enhances the the transparency of that bottle. So in this case, obviously the first bottle isn't rendered, but the, the middle one, you can still see that the, the stripes in that vignette. And that's something that I saw in a different, a different sketch that I thought was really kind of nice. Thank you.